So the first question comes in your mind is what is WordPress? Now WordPress is the simplest, most powerful way to create your own website or blog. In fact, WordPress power over 32.7% of all the website on the internet. Yes, more than 1 in 4 website you visit are likely powered by WordPress. In 2019, WordPress version 5.0 downloaded over 18 million times in the first month. If you wanted to define what is WordPress, then you can simply say WordPress is an open source content management system. Open source means that anyone can use or modify the WordPress software for free. As I said, WordPress is a content management system. So what does it mean? Now let's take a look at what is CMS. The CMS or you can say a content management system is basically a tool that makes it easy to manage important aspects of your website. It helps us to facilitate creating, updating, organizing and publishing content. CMS or you can say content management system allows you to create and publish your content on the web and it's super easy too. We're gonna use CMS to create, update and delete our blog post. We'll understand everything about CMS after a few minutes. But for now, let's understand what is WordPress theme. WordPress theme is nothing but a simple design of your website. It may consist of layout, styling and more. Your WordPress theme might have different layout, various styles and different pages. If you have a basic understanding of PHP, then it's super easy to learn WordPress. This course is for beginners. So don't worry if you're not familiar with PHP till now because we're going to understand the basic understanding of PHP in this course. You'll be able to understand the basic understanding of PHP which can help you to work with WordPress. WordPress uses a PHP MySQL platforms which provide everything you need to create your own website and publish your own content dynamically without knowing how to program those pages. In short, all your content is stored in a MySQL database in your hosting account. So let's get started and first see what is PHP. So in this lecture, we're going to understand what is PHP. We'll install the exam server in the local system and get started with PHP. We're going to understand the basic understanding of PHP, which will help us to work with WordPress. We're not going to dive deep into PHP, but we will just take a simple overview to make you familiar with PHP because the complete PHP is out of this course. So what is PHP? PHP is an acronym for Hypertext Preprocessor. It's a scripting language that's generally used in server-side web development. PHP is an open source server-side language which is used for creating dynamic web pages. It can be embedded into HTML. PHP is usually used in conjunction with MySQL database on Linux or Unix web server. It is probably the most powerful scripting language. WordPress CMS created with PHP and we're going to use PHP to build our complete WordPress theme. We're going to use MySQL to store WordPress data and we will understand how to set up WordPress using exam server. But just for now, let's understand how to set up exam server in a local system. But before we install exam server in a local system, I need to first explain what is exam server. Exam software package contains Apache distribution for Apache server. MariaDB, PHP, and Perl. And it is basically a local host or a local server. The use of XAMPP is to test the clients or your website before uploading it to the remote web server. This XAMPP server software gives you the suitable environment for testing MySQL, PHP, Apache, and Perl project on the local computer. The full form of XAMPP is X stands for cross-platform, A stands for Apache server, M stands for MariaDB, P stands for PHP, and the last P stands for Perl. The cross-platform usually means that it can run on any computer with any operating system. So it means WordPress can execute and run on any computer. Now let's see how to install the exam server and get started with PHP. So let's see how to install exam server in your local system. So you just need to open a browser and in the URL, you just need to search for apache friends.org and just press enter. And from this website, you can download the Apache server 
in your local system. So as you can see here, I have here exam for Windows, exam for Linux and exam for OS X. So I'm using Windows. So I'm going to download this exam server in my local system. So I'm going to just click on this button and download this exam server for my Windows. Once you download this exam server, it's something look like this. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to have exe extension for this file. Now I'm going to just install this exe file in my local system. So I'm going to just double click on this file. And I'm going to just say here yes to install exam server. Now as you can see, you will first get the welcome wizard setup window on your computer. I'm going to just minimize this background window and right here, I'm going to just first say here next to start the setup of exam server. So I'm going to just press here next. So I just want to install MySQL, FileZilla FTP server. Then I'm going to have here pull PHP MyAdmin. So this is the component installed with exam server. So I'm going to leave it as it is and just press next. And once I press next, you can see you just need to select here and choose your folder to install exam server. So I'm going to choose a C drive and there I'm going to create a new folder exam. So this will create automatically a folder called exam in the C drive and we have all the exam files inside this exam folder. So I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to just press next. Now this window will ask you to install Bitnami for exam. Now actually Bitnami for exam provide a free installation that can install Drupal Joomla, WordPress and many more popular open source apps on the top of your existing exam installation. But right now, you know that we are installing WordPress manually. So I'm not going to install it using this window. So I'm going to just uncheck this checkbox and just press next. Now here you can see we have this ready to install this exam. So I'm going to just press next again. So here we are. So the exam is now installing in our system. It will take some time to install in the system. Just wait. Now as you can see, my exam server is successfully installed in my local system. Now this window will ask you, do you want to start the control panel now? Now if you check this checkbox, this will start the control panel just after when you click on this finish button. Now if you uncheck this checkbox and click on this finish, this will just exit from the exam setup wizard. So I'm going to just leave this checkbox as it is and just press finish. Now once I click on this finished, you can see we have to choose the language for the exam server. So I'm going to just leave this as it is and press to the save button. Now this will open up a control panel of exam server. Now as you can see here, we have a different module in this exam control panel. Now from this control panel, you can start or stop your Apache or MySQL module. So to start the Apache server, you just need to click on the start button. So when I press start, you can see my Apache server is started on the port 80. And when I press start button for this MySQL, you can see here a message, a status, change detected and my MySQL server is also started with the port 3306. So as you can see we have here Apache and MySQL started with a different port. Now to stop these services I'm going to just press on the stop button to stop both these services like this right. So using the start and stop button you can start and stop different services of PHP right. Now, once we set up the exam server, let me familiar you with PHP. So let's create a PHP file in the htdoc folder in the exam server. So I'm going to open my C drive and inside it, I'm going to have here exam folder. So I'm going to open it and inside this exam folder, I'm going to have tons of files. You don't need to care about any files here. Instead, you need to take care of this htdoc folder because inside this, we're going to create different PHP files. The htdoc or www is a directory that the Apache web server looks for files to serve on your domain by default. So when you purchase your hosting, the server will look for this htdoc or www folder. This location can be changed whatever you want. But I'm going to leave it as it is and just open this 
htdoc folder. Now inside this folder, we're gonna have different files and folder. So I'm gonna just create here a new folder and just name it php. And inside this folder, I'm gonna create index.html file. But before we create it, I'm gonna just open this folder in the editor. So I'm gonna just open the Visual Studio Code editor and open that folder inside this editor. So as you can see here, I have here an explorer tab and inside this, I can open any folder. So I'm gonna just drag and drop the PHP folder inside this explorer. So I'm gonna just open my folder and right here, I want to open this folder, so I'm gonna just grab it. So I'm gonna just grab this folder and drag and drop this folder in this explorer tab. So when I drop this folder, you can see the Visual Studio code open that folder inside the explorer tab, right? So we have this folder in the Visual Studio code editor. Now I'm gonna just close this welcome window and here I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna name this file index.php. Now take a closer look at this file. When you create HTML file, you're gonna put an extension HTML. When you create JavaScript file, you put extension JS and when you create PHP, you will put PHP extension to the file, right? So I'm gonna just initialize this is a type of PHP file. Now, once we create this PHP file, so let's start with the PHP syntax. So I'm gonna just zoom this file a little bit. And now let's start with the PHP syntax. So the PHP syntax start with an opening angle bracket like this. And then it takes a question mark and a PHP text. And to close this PHP syntax, you just need to specify here a question mark and a closing angle bracket. So this is your PHP syntax where we have all the PHP code. I'm going to just print a simple hello world in the browser. To print a word, I'm going to just call here echo. And in the double quote, I'm going to say here hello world. And I'm going to just close this sentence. Save the changes and now I need to open this file in the browser to see this hello world text. So I'm going to just open a browser. So once you open a browser in the URL right here, you just need to search for localhost forward slash and then specify your folder name. So we know that we have this index.php file inside the PHP folder. So I'm going to just say here PHP and inside this PHP folder, I'm going to have index.php php file so i'm going to specify that file name here when i press enter i'm going to have that hello world in the browser but as you can see here i'm going to get an error this site can't be reached i'm going to get this error because i haven't started my exam server yet so i need to first start the exam server and then call this file so i'm going to just open the exam server so i'm going to just open the exam control panel and right here, I'm going to just start this Apache server. So I'm going to just click on this start button to start this Apache server. Now once the Apache server is started, I'm going to just minimize this control panel and then I'm going to reload this page. Once I reload it, you can see I have this hello world on the document. As simple as that. So as you can see, you successfully created your first PHP program. Isn't it easy? It is. So let's explore more PHP syntax and understand how to work with PHP and understand how to use conditions and variables in the PHP.